Rock and Roll Geek Show 656. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, uh, online since 2004, right. it's the one and only yeah. Rock and Roll Geek Show with the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, September 4th, 2015, when I'm recording this show, and this is day 31 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, the final day of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where me and several other nerds attempt to do a show a day for 31 days. And I'm going to close it out with a rock show. I'm going to do a track-by-track of Disc 1, of Iron Maiden's new album, The Book of Souls. I'm going to do a two-parter. This first part's going to be disc one, and, and the second part I'm probably going to do Monday will be disc two. So in honor of that, oh, by the way, thank you to everybody who donated. I will thank the donors on a show coming up soon, but your name is on rockandrollgeek.com on the show notes of every episode. So thank you to everybody who donated this month, including a new donor, Chili Monk, uh, the note-taker of the Good Clean Fun Show with Jasper and me. Good Clean Fun is dead. Long live Good Clean Fun. Thank you to, thank you to uh, Rishi, is his real name, Chili Monk, for the donation. And in honor of the release of Iron Maiden's new album, The Book of Souls, I'm going to open up my first beer of the day, and I'm going to drink an Iron Maiden Trooper beer in the can, courtesy of my son, Brian. Ah, not bad. A little stronger than Tecate, a lot more body, a little more bitter. 4.7% alcohol. I like Tecate better, but it's got a cool-looking can, man, I'll tell you. All right, let's get right into this, because I'm have to. i getting ready to go. I have a Featherwitch gig. We're opening up for the tubes at um, in Mill Valley, so I need to get the show done within an hour's time. So let's get right into this. The album was released today. Produ- it's, the, it's their 16th studio album produced by Kevin Shirley and Steve Harris. It is on Sanctuary Records. Let's, uh, let me see if I can pull it up on the iTunes here. It's two di- Like I said, it's two discs, and um, it comes in at like a total of like 92 minutes or something like that for the entire CD or for the entire package. The first disc has six songs on it. The shortest song on side one is five minutes and one second. That's the, that is the first single, Speed of Light. So let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, let's just get right into it. The first song is written by Bruce Dickinson, If Eternity Should Fail. This is actually um, the first album in a while that wasn't completely written by Steve Harris. This song, If, if Eternity Should Fail, was written by, um, well, like I said, it was written by Bruce Dickinson, but it was going to be on his next solo album, but he played it for Steve Harris and the the band, and they said, let's put this on the album. So here it is. If Eternity Should Fail, and to keep the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system, if I like it, I give it a plus one. If I don't like it, I give it a zero, and if it's eh, okay, I give it a half. And then we tally them all up. So I'm going to tally them all up at the end of the both episodes. And at the end of the first episode, shh, shut up, Butler. Let's Here listen. In this place, Father, taking clothing him white. Nice beginning. Standing Little alive. build up. Here is the soul of a man. And I, it's hard to do little bits of the songs. I'm going to try to play as much of the songs as I can. I'll just talk over them because there are a lot of parts in all these songs. I'll try to move through them as quick as I can too, though. If eternity should fail. Time to speak with the shame on again. Conjure the jester again. Black dog. Yeah. 
Classic Maiden with the galloping guitars and drums. Love the harmony guitars. When the world was virgin, before the coming of men. Bruce Dickinson sounds fantastic. By the way, this album was recorded before he was diagnosed with cancer in his mouth, which he says that he got cancer on the back of his tongue from eating vagina. Which was, I guess the vagina had HPV, human pap or papilloma virus, whatever that is, and it be- developed into cancer on his throat. And not a last will rise from slumber. He calls our name, recalls our number. How bad we I love that bass chord. Steve Harris plays with a lot of chords, and I love that. The baddest bass player in rock. Catchy as hell, chorus. I'm loving this song. So, so far, it's getting a plus one. Let me see if I can get it to the next part of the tune. Oh, fuck it. Let's just let it roll. Dun, 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 dun. Great, 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 great. Eternal blackness beyond the stars. Bruce Dickinson sounds fantastic. He's just full of attitude. At the master's table, the table's burned. Entire chorus, bass parts are all chords. Okay, next part of the song. An epic opener, 8 minutes and 28 seconds. Lots of epics on this record. to that bass. Not only is the song super heavy, but it's super catchy. Hook, that's a great vocal, a great, great melody hook.
All right, that'll be giving that one a big plus one. Not quite over yet. This end part sends it over the top. Good day. My name is Necropolis. Yes. I'm formed of the dead. I am the harvester of the soul and I suck the lives from round my bed. My only two sons, I gave them breath and I filled them their living corpses with my bile. What humanity I knew, I have long forgotten. For me, eternity is nothing. But a short while. Oh, yeah. Plus one. Next song is Speed of Light, written by Adrian Smith and Bruce Dignison. So far, Steve Harris doesn't have any songwriting credits on the first two songs. This, this one was already released, and I played it on the show before. Bruce Dickinson said that this was influenced a lot by Deep Purple. Which is quite obvious. This is the shortest song on disc one. Coming in at, coming in at five minutes and one second. I'm not going to play this song its entirety. We'll get through the chorus and play a solo. classic metal sound or classic maiden sound i like it but i'm probably going to give it a well we'll listen to a little bit more let's try to get it to the solo here let me fast forward to the solo I don't know who's doing the solos on what, and I'm not an authority on which guy's in Maiden, but I'm going to take a guess and say Adrian Smith did the first one, and the second one was done by um, uh, uh, the uh, second guy, Dave Murray, and I'm saying this one is Yannick Gers. Just a guess. We're going to give that one a half. So we're one and a half out of two. The next song is written by Adrian Smith and Steve Harris called The Great Unknown. Oh, good bass solo intro. This song is 6 minutes and 37 seconds long. Written by Adrian Smith and Steve Harris, like I said. 
Winter softly falling to the ground Calmly waiting, don't you hear a sound? When the world has fallen to the depths below Where the future's open and the fear has grown And the path to follow to the great unknown Where the dark has fallen and the seed is sown All right, I was expecting it to, it, when I first heard it, I was expecting it to go into something more like uh, Number of the Beast or something like that. So that's a little disappointing. So far, not super catchy. Take it through the first chorus. I like the B section, pre-chorus. Ah, that chorus is catchy. Again with the bass chords. Uh, that is a great chorus, man. Let me back that up just a little bit. Yeah. The fact that it took three minutes to get to that chorus. Shredding solo. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that's Dave Murray. Have no idea, but I'm guessing that it's Dave Murray. Great chorus, man. Great chorus. Shit. When I first heard this song, I said, I'm going to probably give this one a half, but I'm liking it more now. Oh, yeah. Guessing that this is Yannick Gers. Wow, <laughs> shredding.
Ah. Oh. All right, that one gets a plus one. That chorus, just for the chorus alone. So far, so good, friends. The next song is called The Red and the Black, written by Steve Harris. The next one is a Steve Harris epic. Well, let's listen to the rest of this one, The Great Unknown. There you go. That's that's great unknown. I like that one. Next one is an epic 13 minutes and 33 seconds. Oh yeah. What a bass tone. I'm just gonna let this one roll for a minute while I go use the bathroom. galloping metal which I like Iron Maiden I think invented the galloping metal right oh yeah a little uh oh how they dance the little the little dwarves of Stonehenge Total spinal tap, but it sounds good. Yeah, I like this part. Wow. That's awesome, man. Listen to that. I can picture a stadium, football stadium full of fans singing along to this. Wow, that was good. This is this is a crusher. Oh, another part. Wow. It's a fucking amazing, man. Oh yeah! Fists in the fucking air! Beers in hand! Entire football stadium on their feet to brand new Iron Maiden! Who would have thought new Iron Maiden would sound this good? Wow! Whoa! Wow! I'm fucking 
fucking de- orgasming to the. No, I'm not, but wow. This is fucking ball crushing. I want to fast forward it, but there's too many great parts. Listen to that. Bruce Dickinson sounds amazing. Sing along. That's catchier than any Justin Bieber, any any of this pop shit. It's just so fucking catchy. I got to tell you, man, after hearing this song, I am made to the top of their game. Listen to that. Oh, another part. Listen to this. Little tempo change. They have to play this one live. They just have to. This song is amazing. Amazing! Yeah. Super catchy. minutes and 33 seconds of one catchy part after another. is just crushing <laughs> this is its uh, nice tempo change total different part during the solo <laughs> we got one jamming solo goes to a completely different part for the second solo
song is the standard to all every heavy metal band should aspire to make something this good. This is my opinion. My opinion only. Ah, more tempo change. Listen to that. I'm exhausted listening to this song. that I like this song. catchy part. soon if I could give this one a plus two I would but that would be breaking the rules big plus one for this one <sighs> okay next song when the river runs deep written by Adrian Smith and Steve Harris five minutes and 52 seconds long here we go <laughs>
I don't know how they can top the song we just heard. Great riff. All right, more classic Maiden sound. Gallop metal. If you should sell your soul as cheaply as I did, then the road to ruin is a long way to hide in. We stand our lives away to have an escape. It's something that will be wild. As heavy as these songs are, I know I already said it, but as heavy as they are, they're fucking, there's just hook after hook. Much fucking metal, man. <laughs> wow, all right. I'm gonna try to get this to well, I, look, I can't step on his his vocals. Alright, let's hear the solo and we'll get out of this tune. Guessing that first one was Adrian Smith, second one, second one Dave Murray with the Stratocaster, and this this Yannick goes. I think Yannick Gers does the more uh, shredding parts. And the other guys are more melodic and tasty. I think back to Adrian Smith. Just me guessing now. Wow. All right, I got to stop that one. It's a plus one, definitely a plus one. Man. All right, next song is the last song on, on disc one. 10 minutes and 27 seconds. It is called, it's the title track, The Book of Souls. Written by Yannick Gers and Steve Harris. I don't want to play the whole song, but it's 10 minutes long. There's so many parts probably that I have to play the whole song. So far, so good. And Steve Harris is fucking good on bass. Stop it! 
Wow, that's catchy as hell. <laughs> Another one stadium all singing along. That is so fucking catchy, man. Wow. I don't know what more to say, but that's fantastic. All right. I hope you enjoyed disc one of the track by track of Iron Maiden Book of Souls. I'm going to do disc two on Monday night. So this is part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I don't know. If you don't like this, you're not a fan of Iron Maiden. That's the only thing I can say. It's, I, to me, it's Iron Maiden at the top of the game. Will disc two stand up to disc one? Tune in Monday night to find out, friends. So out of six songs, I like one, two, three, four, five, and the one I get a half, give a half. So we're five and a half out of six. Hope you enjoyed this track by track of disc one. Let me know what you think of it. If you agree or disagree, rock and roll geek at gmail.com with the subject line. If you agree with me with the subject line, Butler, you know you're metal, man. <laughs> if you disagree, put the subject line, Butler, you're out of your mind. The new Iron Maiden sucks ass. But you would be wrong if you put that in the subject line. I know that. 
Disc one is Iron Maiden at their finest, in my opinion. I hope you enjoy this. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. You can find this show at rockandrollgeek or rockandrollgeek.com. Find me on the Facebook, RNR Geek. Find me on the Twitter, RNR Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. Area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Thank you for tuning in if you're a Dog Days listener, Dog Days of Podcast, and thank you for tuning in 31 Days. I hope you subscribe to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. At least come back Monday to hear, tra- to hear Disc 2. I'm going to let this play out, friends, and we will talk to you Monday. Maybe I'll do an update from Dove Hunting tomorrow. We'll see. And wish us luck playing with the tubes tonight. Should be a fun one in Mill Valley. If you're in San Francisco, come up to Mill Valley. I'll buy you a beer, friend. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.